Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Grand Tactician, the Civil War. In today's video, we're going to be fighting the Tactical Battle of P. Ridge, the Historical Battle of T P. Ridge. Not fighting in the campaign, but the Battle of P. Ridge from the Union side. So, we're going to be fighting on the defensive. Uh, the Battle of P. Ridge was also known as Elkhorn Tavern. It was fought near Fayetteville, Arkansas. And this was a battle where Confederate forces uh, assaulted a Union army under General Curtis. Uh, one of Curtis's main commanders was Franz Sigal, uh, who was a leader of German immigrant soldiers, who was a, a soldier back from Europe, uh, who was fighting on the Union cause. He would become a major figure in the Eastern Front, fighting at the Battle of Second Bull Run, uh, and also fighting in the Valley. Uh, he was a major political force uh, given his relationship with many immigrant groups uh, that were important for Abraham Lincoln to uh, court. Uh, the German soldiers who would fight with Seagal would often proudly say, I fight mit Seagal, uh, with I fight with Seagal, or Seagal. Uh, the commander of the Union Army was Samuel Curtis. I think he was like 55 years, or 57 years old at the time of the battle. His army of 10,500 men was heavily outnumbered by the Confederate forces of 16,500. Uh, the Confederates would attack, but would not surprise Curtis. Curtis detected them on their way in. He basically shifted his line. The Confederates started to come in his rear, and Curtis was able to hold them off long enough to win a tactical victory. The Confederates basically abandoned their supply chain in an effort to get in the Union rear, but then were massively low on supplies and a uh, cold winter's night set in uh, between the first and second day of the fight. This just says it's the battle on, on March 7th, but I believe it, I believe it was a two-day battle. Uh, this was the battle that sort of once and for all decided that Missouri would not leave the Union and that it would stay in the, uh, in the Union camp. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump in here and see if we can replicate history and win a victory for the Union. Most of the tactical battles that I've fought, fought thus far, I've been fighting from the side with uh, superior manpower, or in the case of Gettysburg, where the Confederates had an advantage uh, tactically, lo 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 local uh, numerical superiority as the Union was coming up. So this battle should be interesting, as I think the majority of, uh, of Confederate troops should all arrive at the same time. All right, this is interesting. So it looks like the this battle's objectives are located to the north, but we're deployed down here in the south. I can't move them either. I can't redeploy the troops. So you can see here we've got... Looks like we've got... I can't really tell the, the makeup of these troops. The 4th Division, the 3rd Division, the 1st Division, and the 2nd Division all here in the south, are all here in the south pointing south. Seagal's command looks like it's the entire 4 Division, but then you've got Curtis as well, who commands directly to Davis, the Army of the Southwest. He commands the 3rd Division directly, I think. It's not entirely clear. Curtis has 10,000 men under his command. Seagal has 5,700. So Seagal commands Bussy's artillery, and then the 1st and 2nd Divisions under Absoth and Osterhaus. Meanwhile, Curtis commands all of them. He commands Seagal, but then he also directly commands the 3rd Division under Davis. Jefferson Davis, by the way, different Jefferson Davis. And uh, the 4th Division under Carr. I'm assuming the Rebels would come up in our rear as they did historically. It looks like a very heavily wooded battlefield as well. We're actually on high ground and in good defensive terrain. And I think we're actually dug in here behind some fortifications, which I haven't seen in any of the previous battles. But you can definitely see there's earthworks up here. Meanwhile, it is snowing. It is March March of 62, and there was a, a, a snowstorm at the time of this battle historically. So we're going to play on times four speed, and I think we're just going to maybe abandon our fortifications and head north toward the objectives. At least, historically, that's where the uh, where the Confederates came up. They came up in the Union rear. I think. But again, I, I haven't spotted anything. We haven't seen any indication that the objectives are going to the, to the enemy. Now, with only four divisions, it makes it easier to command via Curtis giving direct orders. You can see Curtis and Seagal are both making their way down to their their units directly so that they're not so far from the front lines. 
Still waiting to see where the enemy might show up. It's 7 in the morning here. We'll move up to times 10 speed. Looks like our troops will stay mostly on the defensive if we don't give orders. I mean, they could come up from the south, but again, my understanding is historically they, they came up... Oh, yep, they've taken 12 corners. So we're going to go ahead and reverse our army's location. Let's actually cancel that. We'll reverse our army's location, try and cross the river here. And move toward uh, the Lee Town Road here. So we're going to pull our entire force out from the south. It doesn't look like there's there's a little indicator here where supplies come on the map in the south. It's currently white, which I assume means the Confederates have no one coming up from the south. They do have a supply line from Ligger, Little Sugar Creek Round. Um, and I think that's it. Our supply line comes at n up from the north near Frost Hill. They've taken the other objective near Round Prairie, so they are moving south toward our locale as we shift our troops in that direction. They've taken that objective as well. We're still on times 10. I think we should probably slow this down to times 4 as we start moving our troops north. Meanwhile, a couple of brigades here. The second brigade, it looks like a few brigades here are remaining in the south. I guess they're not directly under anyone's command. Or maybe they're direct reserves. Or I don't even know. I guess these are just core reserves. So we'll we'll put one of these guys over here facing south. We've got some artillery up this way too. Just in case the Rebs come that way, I guess. They could come back up our rear. So we'll, we'll move these guys so they're a little bit closer and can support each other. As uh, the rest of Curtis's force moves north. We'll be kind of heavily outnumbered, though. If we try and counterattack the enemy. We'll have to try and go for their flanks if we can. See those two brigades here. How many troops are we leaving behind here? About 700. About 2,000. So it's almost one-tenth of our force, isn't it? That's kind of a lot of men to leave behind. Curtis is getting his troops into position still, and then we'll advance straight on the objective near Round Prairie. Round, that uh, is the objective of Round Prairie. You can see our troops all marching into position. It's a very heavily wooded battlefield, so it's going to be hard to get a good line of sight on the enemy. As we get into position. I feel like I'm just wasting those 2,000 men, but I, if my memory serves me right, the Confederates did come up with additional troops to the front of Curtis's army as well. That may not have been until March 8th. In any event, let's let's move these guys up this way. All right, so we'll move them up toward Oberson Field. En masse, the entire army, all is one. Curtis is close in with his army, so he can issue those kind of commands. We're going to shift our right flank out here toward Little Mountain. And we've got a visual on the Confederates now. A couple of batteries here, some enemy enemy troops. It looks like the enemy cavalry is also in position near Round Prairie. They're in a double line by the looks of it. So our troops will move up. We probably want to try and get some... It looks like artillery will be on our flank on Little Mountain. So hopefully they'll have a good line of sight and maybe a height advantage once they get up there. Does look like the Confederates are moving some troops off west toward the other objective here. Not sure why they're marching away from us. Let's bring the second brigade under Grassal up to Oberson Field. Let's also bring that artillery here. The first artillery. We'll leave one unit of 700 just in case. Is it like a skirmish line in our rear? Chapman's getting his battery up onto the mountain. Not sure what they're... Again, I, I don't know exactly how elevation works in the game. I'm assuming it assists in range and visibility. Just because that would be the logical thing. All right, so it does have some overwatch over to the, uh, to the objective. I think we'll move Absoth's division forward. Well, actually, wait. I don't want to move this artillery battery. 
Can I detach these guys? I can't change the OOB. I guess we'll just move the brigades forward individually then and try and flank the uh, the position here. A little bit of flanking with some of these troops. We also have, apparently have a cavalry detachment and some horse artillery. So move those guys forward. Move the third division forward here toward this wood line. And then where are these guys here? The second brigade. Some of these troops are still, oh, that's, that's the other brigade coming up. Why are they marching away from me? The AI is very confusing at times. I guess we'll go take the objective. First division. Why is the whole division not moving out? Second division move out, I guess. That's some artillery. I guess we'll just move the entire force then in one uh, one fell swoop. We'll move this other brigade here of 1,100 men around to maybe get a, a chance to flank the enemy position here as we move toward the Bentonville uh, detour and the 12 Corners Church. Round Prairie is taken, so we've taken that objective from the enemy. The enemy's forming up in a line of battle with cavalry and artillery here. They're in the woods. We'll have to cross open terrain to get at them, so that's not great. They've got a lot of cavalry. Some of these, I think, are Native American troops as well. I don't know if the game reflects that or not. But it does look like the enemy may be coming at us now. As we're trying to get into position, you can see some enemy infantry under Herb Herbert showed up. So the enemy may be deciding, rather than waiting in those woods, to move at us frontally. As we're trying to get into position here. So you can see they're deploying into position. We've got some horse artillery, some flying batteries in, in front. We've got some infantry on the flanks. They've deployed some infantry as well. Now, they have the other objective to the north, so I'd be a little bit worried about them coming down this road and flanking us, which will probably prevent me from moving forward too aggressively. But they didn't get at us before our troops are largely in position by the looks of it. All right, so we're engaged in uh, musketry. Let's go ahead and get these guys uh, dismounted. All right, so we've got two brigades firing into the enemy here, I think. If not, let's advance them. We've also got artillery firing at these guys almost point blank. So the enemy's infantry brigade has moved forward. Their cavalry's still sitting back. Not sure why. They're sending one brigade forward to engage us. 39 losses in our own cavalry detachment, so they are shooting our own cavalry up. They've got more infantry coming up that we can see back on the road. Meanwhile, the 1st Brigade is firing into these guys, according to what I'm looking at anyway. Yep, they are. And the, the Rebels are just sitting there in the open and taking it, so not a very good showing there by them. We did lose some casualties in the 1st Missouri Flying Battery. You can see we're firing at them as they, they withdraw. So not the best showing, Confederates. You just got Herbert's brigade shot up a little bit. Maybe not too bad. It only says 81 casualties out of over 3,000 men. So let's move Grissel. Well, actually, McNair is coming up. Davis's division is here. Carr's division is here. Let's go ahead and move Carr on the flank here of what we can see of the Rebs. Then Osterhaus just has the one brigade. 
Who are these guys? Second Brigade. So this is the second division. Does it only consist of those two brigades? And the artillery? Looks like it. Let's move these guys forward here. Let's see if we can't flank these guys. So we're going to move these guys forward here. There is the risk, as I said, of troops coming down that road into my rear if there's anybody left on that northern objective, but, but we'll go for it. Meanwhile, any indication of anything in the south? Not yet. Hoffman's battery should come up here and support. If we can get him, get him up there. Herbert's coming, coming forward again. The entire line appears to be coming forward, so maybe that was just a probing action on their part. But it looks like the cavalry is all coming forward here. So Herbert may be trying to pin us in position. But now he's withdrawing again. Meanwhile, I'm bringing both of these brigades forward here, the second brigade. And I've ordered the, f the first brigade to move forward as well, but they seem to be laying back a bit. The second brigade may flank these enemy horsemen as they come forward. Maybe they don't know we're there yet. They're kind of moving into the jaws of a trap of mine if they keep keep this up. Okay, this brigade finally got its orders and are now moving. This is uh, Herbert's brigade here. The enemy cavalry is dis their troops are dismounting. Where are they going? How about you just engage? A few casualties lost. The enemy is shooting at us now, but we're in good good terrain, I think. So now we're engaging with an enemy infantry brigade and. Uh, McIntosh's Brigade of Cavalry. So that's a lot of enemy muskets. We do have the 1st Brigade coming up to uh, support them on the flank. Okay, the enemy's going to keep marching toward our, uh, toward our center by the looks of it with their cavalry. They have additional troops forming up south of there. Meanwhile, some of their cavalry is engaging with... 1,500 men of the 1st Brigade here that's firing volleys at them. Looks like relatively close range. The enemy keeps advancing on us. Alright, so I'm wondering if this... The fact that the enemy is cavalry strong might make them more susceptible. Cavalry is not as good, at least historically, at withstanding infantry fire. At least until later in the war, when they get a little bit more firm, I think. Typically not used as just regular infantry, though, as, as the, the AI is kind of using them here. But Missouri was a different... Missouri and Arkansas were different kinds of theaters and campaigns. So you saw a lot of stuff out there, a lot more irregular fighting, a lot more sort of disjointed skirmishing, and less, less direct line-to-line uh, -line battles. Now, P. Ridge and... and uh, and Wilson's Creek were kind of exceptions to that, but not entirely. There were, you know, Native American units in stand-up fighting, which was not very common elsewhere uh, in, in, in the war. All right, so having these troops up here in this wood line is, is good for us, I think. Let's not do that. I don't want you to get all scattered-like. So we'll advance you here. We've got three brigades in the woods, and the enemy is advancing against our main line in the in the open, so it's slugging it out, but we're actually kind of hitting them in the flank as our troops come down from the woods, so uh, they must have misjudged our position, and rather than us being the ones in danger of being flanked, it, it looks like they're the ones being flanked. And we have the better terrain. This brigade here just took its first casualties, Six casualties, but the enemy it's shooting at looks like it's in the open. Meanwhile, our troops in the open are taking a little bit more of uh, a little bit more damage. Second brigade finally got their notice. They're they're kind of at extreme extreme communication range, but they're moving out. Once oh shit, they're coming up our rear. 
Three enemy infantry brigades are coming in from behind. I was wondering, they were supposed to have superior manpower. First brigade. Reverse. You guys aren't engaged, right? You're fine. Pull back here and stop these three infantry brigades coming in from behind. Meanwhile, we're going to double time... Oh, shit. There's more troops down here? Wade's batteries coming up from behind there, too? I hope these guys get the, get the message. Dodge, bring your brigade over here to form a new brigade in the rear. We don't need all of you here. Shit, we're in melee now by the looks of it. Well, this battery of artillery is getting shot to pieces by the looks of it. Are these guys even engaged? Doesn't look like it. Alright, cavalry, you reverse your front. Meanwhile, McIntosh's brigade is engaging our own infantry in hand-to-hand -hand fighting. We're bringing the first brigade over. We'll bring Grissel's 1,100 men that look like they're not engaged as well. Hopefully we can drive this enemy cavalry back and then we can free that brigade up for, for, hand, for fighting. Bring the first brigade up over here. This other 1st Brigade is engaged. Bring this 2nd Brigade over here. I think this 1st Brigade will keep shooting at these guys. These guys are in good cover in this wood line. And I think they've taken a bit of the, the fire out of that enemy attack. Enemy artillery coming up. Two batteries coming up this direction. I don't even know if we're going to get orders to our troops back here. I don't think they have any way to get those orders. The couriers would likely ride through uh, hostile, hostile lines of troops. A fourth brigade is moving up over this way. Fortunately, we're able to get our first brigade deployed, and the enemy is coming up in up a roadway, so they're not able to as quickly get on us. The second brigade can form up on the flank and prevent these guys who are going up through the woods from flanking us, and maybe even flank the flankers, since we can maybe stack them up on the road as they try and come up. Meanwhile, the first brigade trying to shoot into McIntosh's cavalry. We have so many first brigades, it's hard to keep track of, but it looks like this first brigade here in the third division is blinking red, meaning they're probably going to break soon. Any way you can get over that way? All right, we're dealing with enemy skirmishers on the front of the road there. Meanwhile, the second brigade here has at least temporarily pushed back Herbert's brigade. There's an Indian brigade here. How many brigades does Her Herbert have? Good God, sir. You know what? Screw that. Issue those orders to stop. Go wreck their artillery. If you can. Yep. Looks like they routed uh, 1st Brigade, 3rd Division of Patterson. Somehow their cavalry broke us. And is now in our rear. This cavalry detachment's going to turn south here with their 500 men and engage what's left of the of McIntosh's cavalry here. They've lost over 500 men, though, so that's the, the positive aspect. Meanwhile, huge numbers of enemy infantry coming up our rear. We're trying to hold the Rebs off here. We're routing, by the looks of it, this first detachment here. Slacker's detachment is all... He's sending skirmishers forward here to do a little bit of damage to soften us up. I think it's working. But now if they come forward on our center, all I've got to stop them is some artillery. I do have some... Infantry engaged up here against these enemy horsemen here. Another one of McIntosh's brigades, if you will. I thought you were going to go engage this 
artillery directly, like close in and, and route them with musketry fire at close range, not sit and take take case shot from distance. Alright, so they're firing into the flank of this this element, I think. So I'm hoping they can break that enemy infantry or cavalry here. Here, you turn over here and engage. You guys are still not moving forward. You're just sitting there taking artillery fire. Not exactly what I wanted you to do. Meanwhile, enemy has formed up a solid battle line in our rear. Have we gotten these troops down here moving? We do. We do have the 2nd Brigade moving up this roadway. They're going to run smack dab into the enemy flank and enemy artillery over here. So a massive enemy battle line looks stronger than anything we have in our line. How have we not routed these guys yet? How many casualties will these rebels take? They're inexperienced. They've lost over 500 men, supposedly. And they just keep eating more, more fire. This is the, the wrecked brigade already. The first brigade and the second brigade here engaged from the second division. Have we routed these guys yet, or are they just withdrawing? Doesn't say they're broken yet. All right, so first brigade is causing those guys to withdraw at least. Well, that whole unit's going to rout. But maybe it's at least buying us some time. What just happened to the rest of his brigade? Did they just all die? Did all those guys just drop dead? Alright, so our infantry is coming up here on the enemy flank against their artillery. Gonna try and close the range. See if we can't wipe these guys out with close range fire from infantry. Meanwhile, their battle line's coming forward here. We've got like 2,000 men against what looks like 10,000. Maybe not quite that many, but sure, a strong, a strong enemy force. Let's turn our artillery around too, guys. There's no reason for those guns to be pointed the direction they are. This cavalry will come down here and strengthen the southern edge of this line. You know, all these guys are taking considerable damage from the enemy artillery at close range. I would assume they're doing some damage to these guns. Hopefully routing them. Enemy brigade is moving down on this, this battery of artillery here, which is shooting at them, hopefully doing some damage got multiple batteries. Now we've got these guys who are, I imagine, firing into the flank of these guys. Two batteries can fire into the flank of this detachment. And maybe they drove them back, actually. They look like they're withdrawing. Again, I'm playing everything in times four speed right now, so they're going a little bit quicker. Our own infantry here is losing quite a few casualties. I, I can't believe this battery of artillery is standing up to that fire as long as they are. Enemy cavalry is charging into our flank. Turn to meet them. Engage. Volley fire. Our own cavalry needs to move back here and hopefully support these guys that are back here against this massive line of enemy infantry that's coming forward on us. The 
first brigade, I want you to close with this enemy cavalry. See if you can't rout them. Oh, don't do that. Fire into their flank. All right, so we did rout the enemy artillery finally. After quite a spirited go, they're running. They're running! But now we've got another battery to deal with, and I don't know if my troops will, will be game for that. Or maybe this is just a... T no, they look like artillery. Second Brigade is, is, is gamely fighting the enemy in their rear. First Brigade, likewise, is engaged with whatever these really light blue-coated uh, Militia State Guard. Some of these enemy brigades, while they certainly have a large number of units, don't seem to be the strongest units. Meanwhile, I think our troops who came up in the south routed. At least I don't see them anymore. All right, so these guys held off this, this enemy cavalry detachment of the Indian Brigade. Looks like they broke them. So they drove them back. They really need to come up here and, and support here, this cavalry detachment. 500 men on the, on the southern edge of the line would be useful. The enemy's still moving forward, slowly. But they're trying to put pressure on our two brigades here. This first brigade hasn't lost too many casualties. The second brigade's got more pressure on them. The enemy's coming at them through the woods. More state guards. So again, these guys might be also militia, so that could be playing a role in why they're not as effective in pushing us back. Looks like we did break one of those brigades coming on the flank there. My troops are in wooded terrain. Both of these units are in the woods. So hopefully that, that's one reason maybe they're giving a better account of themselves. Meanwhile, these 500 cavalry coming up here to reverse their front. Looks like another enemy brigade here is coming up on our rear, so we're gonna we're gonna switch the second brigade up here to engage there. Second brigade here's it says they're in melee. I don't understand that. The game needs to work on its melee pathing, because I don't know who they're meleeing with. First Brigade's now lost over 350 men as they continue to deal with two brigades in the north here. Greer's Cavalry and uh, Herbert's first whatever detachment. It's almost like he's a division in, unto himself. The battle results are swinging in our favor. I don't think these, despite the large number of units, I don't know that these enemy troops that came up on our flank were all that... Uh, all that potent, I guess. They're coming forward again. You can see these guys advancing. The brigades are advancing against us. Again, these are mostly inexperienced. Well, I don't know if that's true. They fought at Wilson's Creek, or a large number of these troops fought at Wilson's Creek. So I don't know that it's true to say they're inexperienced, but... Hey, they're not in melee anymore, so how about you move forward and engage this enemy artillery at point blank? The cavalry that's retreating past you is already broken. And the first brigade here is, is driving back this infantry here again. So again, good terrain, high ground, wooded terrain. It's giving them good coverage here so they can deal with overwhelming numbers coming up on them. I'm going to pull this infantry back here to try and stabilize. So we're going to pull 850 men of the second brigade back to aid our main line, which has sort of reversed itself against the enemy, hoping that the 1st Brigade in those woods and then the 2nd Brigade, Grusel's 2nd Brigade, can hold long enough to uh, against any troops that might try and come up in our rear. This courier is trying to get to him. We'll see if it makes it to tell him to move forward here. They do. They get there. All right, so they're going to close distance with this battery of artillery. Meanwhile, the main line of enemy resistance is advancing on us. First Brigade, the second brigade, and our cavalry detachment under Busi. Meanwhile, the second brigade's also gonna come up here to support and prevent our cavalry from being flanked. So we got a good firing line going here. You can see brisk work being done. 
And then you've also got uh, the second brigade coming up here just uh, behind their flank, but firing in and covering fire as well. Lots of enemy artillery in the woods here. But I think we may hold on. Let's move these guys up a little bit more, a little bit closer. It's a tight one, that's for sure. How much ammo do these guys have? Alright, so we routed that enemy artillery, also in our rear. So Grissel's brigade is stable, they've taken very heavy casualties, but they're hanging in there. And now that they've routed the enemy artillery, I'm going to try and move up into the rear of this enemy infantry and see if we can't f crush them between these two brigades. Going to bring some of my artillery up out of these woods to support against the enemy advance. I don't know if we can fire over the heads of our men, but we're going to try. So bring those three batteries of artillery up. Curtis's men still have 80% of their ammunition, according to that report. First brigade's hanging in there. Second brigade, they're still eager. The cavalry is determined, which I think means their morale is starting to slip. So I'm going to bring these troops forward here. They're eager to under the second brigade. A lot of enemy artillery coming up through this woods. They're in good, good cover in those woods. That, that can, artillery could be a problem. I love the smoke that's kind of building up here around this infantry fight here. The 1st Brigade still fighting. Herbert's Brigade is in the open. They've lost a thousand men. Looks like uh, Grissel's Brigade here is stable, but they're blinking red, which is not a good sign. Means they probably can't take too much enemy fire, but they may not have to. Being in the rear of the enemy. Their mere presence, in fact, may may spur the enemy to withdraw. Another volley into the enemy. We'll see what, what that does to him. His troops are stable, but they're pulling back now. They don't want to fight anymore. This cavalry's broken, but this other detachment back here, the 2nd Brigade, 2,800 men. They haven't done anything yet. That's the AI not using its troops efficiently. Meanwhile, 853 men of the 2nd Brigade coming up helps to beat back the 3rd Division's Missouri State Guard. We'll move these guys up to directly support the cavalry's flank. We've moved our own artillery up here to hopefully pour it into the enemy artillery in the woods here. Another enemy brigade routed and driven back. There's still four more small brigades to our front and Green's brigade on our flank. Schaefer's brigade, meanwhile, continues to hold in the woods. The enemy looks like it may be trying to force a melee, which may shift things to their advantage. We'll shift our fire to this enemy infantry coming up on us. Meanwhile, the 2nd Brigade looks like they got the relief they need. They're stable. They're no longer blinking red, so that withdrawal may have refreshed them. The enemy's coming forward for a melee, by the looks of it. Firing into point-blank range at these, these enemy troops. Our morale is still eager. I have to imagine theirs may not be, after a thousand casualties. Also, I still think we have the advantage of elevation. Our couriers are miraculously not dying within feet of the enemy. Someone shoot that man! All right, meanwhile, back by the farm in our, in our rear. Second Brigade is hanging in there. They've lost another hundred men, though. So this, this enemy advance on our flank may prove to be the challenge. We do have our officer here directly with his men. Ab As Asboth? And then our uh, cavalry here detachment with our manured carbines. Fired into these uh, 6th Division Missouri State Guards. The 2nd Brigade has come up. And is firing in support. I don't know who they're shooting at. Maybe this artillery here down in these woods. Our own artillery is firing into them. Where did our other batteries go? These guys are still in place. I guess they are shooting at the enemy over here. So they're doing their job. Meanwhile, the 1st Brigade held against that enemy infantry advance. Or the enemy infantry withdrew. Not sure which. Grissel is now firing. The enemy is caught between two fires. One in their front, one in their rear. McCullough's division has come up. 
Is that the second detachment there? Nope, there's still some troops back there. I don't know why they're wasting those 2,000 men. That could be the difference here. Roussel, what a great leader. Inspiring his men. Engage those Rebs. Danger, or the worst of the danger, looks to be up. We broke another enemy brigade here. Lindsay's brigade is broken and falling back. Can't read this guy's name, but this guy's brigade is broken and falling back. The enemy still has some artillery in the woods. But I think the worst of it's over. We can probably shift troops as we need to. We've got two brigades caught in a crossfire here. Looks like this enemy unit here may break. 1,200 casualties now. Again, they're caught between our 2nd Brigade and our 1st Brigade here. It's the fr This Brigade is down to Lieutenant Frederick Schaefer, though. I can't imagine the Lieutenant was the commander of the Brigade earlier, although I missed... I know I said his name a couple times, but I'm not sure if he was the starting commander or not. Colonel Nicholas Grussell is also playing a key role here, firing into the enemy. These guys are down to 28 rounds of ammunition. They're firing through their ammo pretty aggressively. Oh, shit. Second brigade on our flank here in the rear just broke. So if these, these enemy troops march south, they may be able to... Well, probably not. There's not really much of a threat to their front. The cavalry detachment isn't even... In, I don't know who they're engaged with. It says they're engaged with someone. Second Brigade, I think, is firing at these enemy artillerymen. We're losing quite a few men. They've lost over a third of their strength. We'll just leave them be and let them wear down those enemy guns. It is now confirming we should have a major victory on our hands if the battle ends now. I think the enemy has sort of spent its energy at this point. Meanwhile, our first brigade is still eager. Our second brigade is stable. And I imagine we're gonna we're gonna route these two enemy brigades from the field. Again, I don't know what this this detachment of 2,900 men is doing back here. And maybe a nice rear guard. But again, that's that's the difference right now. My own flank is in danger if this one unit comes south, but it's a relatively small. Well, 9,900 men isn't small. But I'm hoping if they're not, they're they are moving, but they're moving. I think a little too slowly. I don't think they're coordinating well. These these two state guards units will probably be routed before they get there. 200 men, they're routed now. And this one only has 300 men. So even though, even though they were two brigades, they were outnumbered two to one. So we just drove them from the field. Is that Rufus or Ru Rains? Rains, Missouri State Guards. Meanwhile, both of those units in the rear, both the cavalry units back here have been routed. McNair's the only, he's a, I guess he's not as strong as I thought. It says 1,300 men. No, 2,900 men it still says. In any event, we routed those guys. So we're going to bring forward the 1st Brigade here to replace the 2nd Brigade that had been driven off our northern flank. And we should be good there. Sent artillery up to 82 casualties. Meanwhile, the 1st Brigade sitting here, they've used most of their ammunition. They're down to 27 rounds. But they're giving a good account of themselves. I don't know why these guys, since these guys are routed and yet they're marching toward us. Well, if they rallied themselves? Maybe they don't have somewhere to retreat? refuse that line here. They're coming straight at us, boys. Pretty sure these guys are broken. I don't know what they're doing unless they're trying to surrender. Meanwhile, the 1st Brigade has come up here. Another 600 men on the northern part of our line here to help. Maybe they're trying to retreat off the map and doing something stupid. Brings us into melee by the looks of it. They go right through our line, though. Must still be that retreating bug. 
Meanwhile, enemy infantry here. Is McNair doing anything? Conrad is retreating off the map. Grissel. I don't really want you to go engage McNair if we don't have to. But you're going to stay back here in case McNair tries to push on our rear. I think the arrival of this first brigade here is going to do what we need it to do to secure our northern portion of our line. While well, the first brigade pours it into the uh, first Mississippi Missouri brigade of the Missouri State Guards. There's 700 or so men. Meanwhile, we've routed some of this enemy artillery from the field. We'll advance our infantry against the enemy artillery. There's still two more batteries here in the south. We want to complete the route. The Iga, boys. The Iga. 647 or 17 rifles against 903 of the 3rd Missouri Brigade. I really wish I could just rotate. I wish there was a wheel mechanic. They just wheeled for me. I don't think I told them to do that. But we've got a good firing line. The enemy does have the high ground, I imagine. We may lose a fair bit of infantry trying to go head to head with enemy enemy batteries of artillery here. Second Brigade, you come down here. I don't want you to actually fight those guys. I want you to come down here. Can they shoot at these guys as they retreat past them? You got 46 rounds left, boys. Make good use of them. Or just keep ramming home those those mini balls. I don't know. All right. This enemy unit looks like it's about to break. It's flashing red. All right. Second Brigade, you move along that fence line and try and take out this battery of enemy artillery. Either way, I think we're pretty clearly this is this is a victory. It's a messy one, but it's a victory. Okay. I mean, they could give us a bit of a headache if the other, if these 3,000 men came pushing. They get, they're getting stronger. I don't know if this is really, is this like a mirage? Is this some kind of fog of war? Let's go find out. I was close for a while. I was, I was a little bit worried. But I think we got this. Let's go ahead and speed things back up. So we're engaging this artillery with our cavalry. Only inflicted a few casualties here as our infantry moves out exposed in this field to try and engage them. Let's close our cavalry in to try and hit them from point blank. All right, so our cavalry is engaging this enemy artillery now. Doesn't seem to be inflicting too many casualties on them. I imagine we're in canister range too, so we probably aren't going to take too much of that. It's a bit of a pounding. Meanwhile, these two enemy brigades that are left are, are giving a good account of themselves. The 3rd Missouri and the, is it the 1st and 3rd Missouris. Our own infantry here, the 2nd Brigade, has advanced a little bit. Osterhauer's low on ammunition. Really? 3,000 men? They really don't want to fight, though. They're retreating. All right, I don't want to I don't want to engage 300 rifles. I don't have to. Osterhaus, meanwhile, is down to 14 rounds of ammunition. Finally drove off the 1st Missouri. Broke him. So we're going to have him turn north with his limited remaining ammunition, 14 rounds, and try and help us finish off the 3rd Missouri rifles. Meanwhile, our infantry on the tree line here Taking heavy losses, but we did drive off one of those enemy batteries. Looks like our cavalry detachment probably withdrew a little bit as well. We've finally driven off the second bat battery of artillery. And so I think this is clearly a victory. So we'll go ahead and uh, fast forward, and or I guess we'll, we'll see if we can get a ceasefire. Fast forward to the end. 
Darkness has fallen. My army's resupplied. Okay. There's got to be a ceasefire at this point, right? I've got troops that are apparently surrounded. By what? Enemy... <laughs> what are they surrounded by? Enemy... Enemy what? Enemy officers? Van Dorn's up here. I don't know what he's going to fight me with. Let's fast forward the ceasefire here. I'm waiting for a ceasefire. It says we've got a major victory. You'd think the Rebs would withdraw with only one effective brigade. But the enemy doesn't want to withdraw because they still, I guess, have one brigade worth fighting. That's absurd. What's left of their army? All right, guys, so I tried to fast forward through this and some weird things happened and enemy artillery routed like three of my brigades and then we ended up losing, but we didn't really lose in my opinion because they had like one battery of artillery left. And every time I tried to engage their infantry, they retreated. So this is a victory. Um, let's just jump ahead to the end screen despite what the game may tell us. Major defeat. I don't agree with that. So we lose 2,300 of our 7,300 men. They lost way more than 450 men. This even down here says they lost 9,500. This doesn't make any sense. They lost more than half our army. We lost just less than half our army. I'm going by the totals here. 9,500 Confederates out of 17,000. 4,700 Federals against 10,500. Both armies were wrecked, no doubt. But the enemy only has five guns of 60 left. We still have 35 guns of 53 left. We still have over 300 cavalry. They have 800, admittedly. But we still have 5,000 infantry, and they have... Well, these numbers don't make sense. Maybe they've got 6,500 left out of... I don't know. Anyway, I'll still call that a victory. There you go, guys. The Battle of Pea Ridge. Uh, a very interesting fight. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. That's going to wrap it up here for me today. And until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching. This was me playing Grand Tactician The Civil War. This is a game that is available on Steam, and it is uh, still in early access. So obviously, as you can see here from this video, still some bugs and things to work through. Uh, but I'll call it a victory. Until next time, this is the Historical Gamer once again saying thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I'm out.